This is Corey Cross. This is Wade Redden. Hi, this is Braden Holpe. Hi, this is Scott Hartnell. My name is Jim Patterson. Hello, everyone. I'm Carly Agro from Sportsnet Central. Hey, it's Ron McLean, Hockey Night in Canada and Rogers Hometown Hockey. Hello, Lloyd Minster. This is Keith Morrison. And welcome to the Sean Newman Podcast. Now let's get on to your T-Bar 1 tale of the tape. Originally from Paradise Hill, Saskatchewan. He's been in Hollywood for over 13 years trying to make it as an actor. He caught a break with a Liberty Mutual commercial that made him extremely popular. Liberty Biberty. He's made appearances on hit shows such as Letterkenny and Modern Family and now can be found on Roswell, New Mexico, and The Bold and the Beautiful. I'm talking about Mr. Tanner Novlin. So buckle up, here we go. You want me to say Dr. Finn? Absolutely. Um, what do you want me to say? Welcome to the Sh- Sean Newman Podcast. This is Dr. Finn, Tanner Novlin. Don't, you don't even want me to say my name? You I don't even want to get me on the intro? Fuck you. Do you want to? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> last one. I'm logging off. <laughs> See ya. I'm gonna say I'm Tanner Novel and I play Dr. Finn. No, no, I don't want Tan. No. Wait, you want me to say hi? I'm Tanner Novel and Dr. Finn. I don't know. Okay, I'll say just Dr. Finn. All right, just fucking go. All right. Um. <laughs> hi, this is Dr. Finn, and welcome to the Sean Newman Podcast. Welcome to the Sean Newman Podcast. Tonight, I'm joined by Dr. Novelin, I guess I should be calling you now, right? I don't know. Yeah. Th- this wasn't talked about the last time with last time we chatted. So thanks for hopping on. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure. As I said, it's a big, it's a big sports night, but that's okay. I'll take it off for you. <laughs> well, for people who want to hear the, uh, I don't know, the origin story, go back to episode sixty-eight. That was April eighth when we were talking. We we're just saying there was no sports. There was no, there was no nothing. Yeah, that's crazy. That was. Um... That feels like not that long ago and feels like 10 years in the same, in the same breath of like when I, when I last talked to you, uh, I don't know what was, I don't know what was going on. I still don't know what's going on. So there's a lot that's happened in the, in the world. And uh, so it's nice to catch up with you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been a busy guy. You've done a lot of things. Yeah. It's been pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Ironically, like when I talked to you, I, I kind of have that all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Line, like in the pipe but i couldn't i couldn't say anything because it was not we didn't know what was going to go on or like what was gonna um you know happen with the covid and and shooting and uh amazingly enough uh the production bold and beautiful brad bell and the entire team were the first ones in north america to figure out how to go back to work and uh i was one of the first actors to be on set uh in in north america learning how to shoot through covid and uh, before we get to that experience, all I want to know is, have you, uh, Catherine Kelly Lang, I had mm-hmm. like hardcore crush on her as a kid when I'd be like sick, come home from school, bold and the beautiful. It's like the only one that like of all the shows for you to go on. I'm like, that is one foxy lady. I mean, she's got to be what 50. Well, hell, she's got to be what close to 60. I would assume. I. Uh- She's not a day over 20 in my book, man. I have no idea what you're talking about. But Kelly Lang is an amazing, amazing actress. Fun to work with. And uh, I didn't know that, man. That's cool. All right. Next time, once COVID's kind of cleared up, maybe we can have you come down and you can, if you heal, you, know, <laughs> you won't attack her. You can come come to the set and you can come hang out, man. Oh, God. <laughs> you? You're going to be like my mom. I don't think I can bring in my mom. She's like. You know what's very, funny? Very I, excited. I, the moms are very excited. I'm I'm wondering who's you. who's the most excited out of uh, you know every interview you have. I feel like your dog's probably more famous than you at this point, Old Thorn. Yeah, like, right. Like I'm like funny? the first question they always ask you is, "We have the sexy Tanner Novlin on," and then it's like, "I hear you got a dog named Thorn," and I'm like. Wow, they really they really like the I dog. Did, I did. My mom loved, my mom straight up jacked that name right off the soap opera. Who would have thought like 20 years later I'd, I'd be on the show? Yeah, it's pretty funny. She's a big big fan. Did you uh did you roll in the set in the uh, the Red Lightning? Uh, I didn't no. No. I uh, she's that's only special occasions that one. What's a special occasion the like the first day of of the going on set? 
No, I, that's true. Actually, that would be kind of a you know, um, Torson is an actor in it. He's a big hockey guy too. He, uh, he plays a character Ridge. He um, and ironically, he's a good uh, good friends with uh, Ken Holland because uh, oh, he has okay. a, he's a big Red Wings guy. And so I'm always trying to get the inside scoop. So I'll let you know, you know, what's 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 going on. I should know Holloway is going to be picked tonight. I should have known that. I should have asked Torson when I was on set. I kind of forgot the draft was coming up. But um, <laughs> he always rolls up in like this really cool Jeep that's been like, you know, it's got to be like, I don't know, maybe in the early 70s Jeep. And it's like all refurbished and it sounds mean. And he like hops in his long hair and he drives to Malibu. <laughs> that's kind of, I could see. I should maybe do, do, do the truck. I like it. <laughs> Going, did you, did you, uh, you, you're talking about, you know, right up the hop, we were just saying that uh, when we last talked, there was like nothing. There was like literally nothing. Well, now we've had uh, the NHL playoffs went off, right? Tampa yeah. Bay wins a cup. Tonight's the draft. You got baseball playoffs. You got uh, basketball playoffs. You've been uh, keeping up on that. I mean, you got, like you say, you got the Dodgers, you got the Lakers. I mean, yeah, looks I'm like, big. it looks like LeBron's bringing you a championship. Yeah. I'm a big, uh, I'm not as big on, on basketball. Um, I do watch it like I, I appreciate it. I'm a definitely a Laker guy over over a Clipper guy because I've always loved Kobe and so when I first moved here I always appreciated him and what kind of player he was um but yeah big Dodger uh big Dodger fan there's nothing better uh, than in hockey playoffs I mean like a baseball playoffs are, are right there because you know anything can happen on a pitch on a swing you know it doesn't it, it can all change really quick and I love love that angst but it's been weird I think and everyone can kind of agree like watching it's tough for hockey. It's tough look for hockey. I think they did an amazing job, like even get like awarding the Stanley Cup and they, the players, like everything they went through, that was seamless. But as a, as a viewer, I found it, I found it a little bit uh, hard to, hard to get into. And it's, I'm sure the casual viewer, I don't know what the numbers were, but having that, I mean, a lot of guys will say, you know, I never was a hockey fan until I went to a game and then I, and they steal the speed. And so, and that's with, you have a crowd going on on the TV. So it doesn't translate as well. Some sports, some football, amazing. I've been watching a ton of football and, and you know why? Cause they, they never really show the crowd in the game. It's the field takes up the whole shot. And so it kind of feels normal, you know? Um, so football has got a little cheat with that. The, I mean, the cardboard cutouts are just weird with baseball, but it's, I guess something. Basketball is and- just as weird with those, like the, uh- flat screen people popping in out of them i don't know even what that is yeah it's like live zoom feeds i guess i don't know if we could re if we could go back to our last time we talked tell me to buy zoom stock i miss that one yeah i miss that one too yeah, yeah. it's yeah and you be a rich all the man commercial real estate <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's pretty crazy You've been, uh, have you, did you enjoy the, uh, baseball more teams getting in? Yeah, I think that's the kind you kind of have to do that because it was you, with this, with the season and everything and, and what it is. And those guys are used to, uh, what 162 game schedule and shortening it like they did. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's cool. Whatever. As long as the Dodgers win, I don't care. You think Dodgers are winning? They're really good, man. They are really good. Yeah. As long as knock on wood, where's Kenley, my man, my <laughs> My clothes are kind of, they had a tune on the other night. I was like, that's not enough. That's not enough. <laughs> but he'll find it. He's got it in him. Have cool. you, you, you know, in talking Dodgers, Lakers, before all this went down, have you, I mean, do, baseball games a little easier to get into. Uh, mm. Have you gone? Not so much? Mm, Dodger game in the playoffs, man. When they're in the World oh, Series. Oh, in the playoffs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tried every, I called everybody. I couldn't get in that place. I wasn't Dr. Finn yet. I got it. Maybe now I could get in there. We'll see. That could be a cutout. <laughs> There's Dr. Finn sitting beside her behind home plate. Hey, whatever. <laughs> have you been, have you been to, how about a Lakers game or like, uh, have you yeah. been to watch LeBron play? Uh, I haven't been to watch LeBron play um, since he's been here. No, I haven't, but I've been to, you know, I saw Kobe play, which was cool um, back then. And then like, I kind of, I think, I don't know. I haven't been, I'm not getting, I'm not a huge basketball guy, but um, yeah, yeah. I'll I've... go there. Fun. they're kind of like a it's like a big scene there that's that's kind of cool a lot of the celebrities come to that the reason i ask is i mean like i'm not a big basketball guy either but the lakers kind of have like the feel of you know one of those teams it's a storied franchise in it's selective sports so they like totally. totally although i'll tell you the thing that i'm really looking forward to and it's just such a shame is our new stadium for the rams is sick i guess chargers too sorry forgot don't forget about the chargers there's you know 
from San Diego, but they're LA now and we're accepting them. And uh, that's, that's fine. It's just weird. It's weird to be in a city under as for it. Weird to live in a city. And I guess the guys, I'm not a big basketball guy. didn't really affect me that much, but it's strange to have two sports teams. I don't know who to supposed to cheer for, but the Rams are, Rams are here first. And so I thought, okay, this is the team. I wasn't big into football at the time. I did fantasy, which was cool. So I know all the players, but I didn't have a team from Canada, from, from paradise Hill. So I'm like, well, who rough riders aren't in it, you know, they're in a different league. So I got to figure something out. And there was no one. That, and I was like, I don't want to really be a Raider guy. I was like, be a Raider fan. I'm like, I live in Oakland. I don't know. It's just weird. And so I did a lot of fantasy. And then now the Rams came and I was like, awesome. I guess I'm a Rams fan. And uh, I got to go to that Super Bowl, which was amazing. Uh, well, not really because we lost and it was kind of a shitty game. But the experience was phenomenal. Who was the halftime show at that one? Uh, Adam Levine in Maroon 5. Oh, Maroon 5. And, Maroon uh, 5. And Bah- Bahati was in the suite beside us. So I didn't watch a lot of Maroon 5. I thought for a second maybe you had uh... yeah. his wife. That buddy's his wife, Sean. Yeah, no, I realized. Just do a that. quick Google and you, and you'll 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 understand. <laughs> I thought for a second you were at the uh, um, the Super Bowl with fuck, what's her name? Lady Gaga. No, J Lo. Oh, J Lo. No, that was this year. I went to the one two years ago when the Rams. Two ran. years ago. Two years ago. Uh, yeah. In uh, Atlanta. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a that was a good. Uh, I mean, it really wasn't a great game, but it was fun to like when your team is in it to go watch it. That's that's what's special. It's just we shit the bed. Girlie couldn't run in ball. I don't know. It's tough luck. Score three points. <laughs> the new stadium's unreal. I've been. Right. I don't know. Well, I mean, amazing. I've been watching it on Instagram slowly grow. <laughs> uh, but it would be amazing to go watch that team there. How um, are things in LA? Well, I gotta like, actually, this is kind of funny. See, this is what's tough about it. It's like I can't really. You, you gotta have me on later in life when I can talk. Like, I don't know if I talk out of school or not. You know what I mean? Like that. So that's so that Super Bowl trip was legendary. And I on the plane home, um, it was it was me and uh, it, it, I'll just I'll, I'm gonna make this a short story. So uh, we got flown out, which was was awesome. We went with our one of my uh, good friends, and uh, she was presenting at the uh, NFL awards at the, at the honors. And so we got to, she was like, Hey, you want to tag along? And we got, you know, Kill and I went together. I was like, absolutely. So she presented. And meanwhile, we got to hang out with, with everyone else who presented, which was you know, like Paul Rudd, uh, David Harbour, uh, and Paul Rudd's awesome, by the way. Um, and um, old uh, Mad Men himself. Really? Mm-hmm. So we get on the plane on the back and I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, we're chilling. We like watch the whole game and Don Draper's at the front of the plane. And he's like, come on, man. He's like, we're all fired up. And we start playing dice. You ever played dice before? Can't say I have. Okay. So dice is like, uh, look it up. You'll, you'll learn how to play, but it's a very easy game. You can do it when you're kind of drunk, but it's money gets flown around. Like it's going on. Sorry. I want $890 off Don Draper at the front of the, in front of the jet. That's kind of fun. <laughs> you know I mean? That's a story. Like, most of us don't have. I probably have one eye open in that part. You know, the whole, Went through that, went through the whole, you know, because we watched the game. And then once we've done the game, we're whisked out of there. We got on the jet and flew flew back that night. You know, landed back in LA at like, you know, four o'clock in the morning or whatever. And so it was, a, that was a, that was a fun one. There's some memories there. Oh man. Well, just think, uh, you know, now you're, you're bold and the beautiful guy. I mean, that show oh. has been on air since like the eighties, 87 to be exact. Like, think about that. 33 years. Yeah, it's pretty legendary. 8,000 8, episodes. Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, every day, man. Um, yeah, it's a, ve- it's, it's a definite um, storied, uh, like, like series to, to be on that long and survive. And you think about, like, how hard it is to, to get ratings and to stay on television. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool to be a part of that um, fraternity of people, you know? Well, how was going back uh you know like our my type of work is a little different than what uh what you gotta go i mean hell acting is supposed to be in the same room across from each other you have a hot moment i mean we talked about it last time i assume that isn't happening so maybe uh, walk walk us through how this all goes uh you mean the hot moments yeah that, that's kind of what everyone wants to talk about it's kind of interesting it, well, not it, it, so. The, I mean, the whole series, the whole show was based on the hot moments, right? And so they had to come up with a way to figure out how to how to create that, you know. 
Um, and the regulations and the guidelines, because we were one of the first men back, we're more strict than anybody. You know, there's other shows I see where they're able to be, um, we have to stay eight feet apart at all times. And it doesn't sound like very far, but on camera, it's a mile. And then also, I mean, mark out eight feet. It's, a, it's a, like to have a conversation with someone, you would, you would walk closer. And so to build chemistry with someone and to have like an embracing moment with someone who's eight feet away and they're shooting super tight, it's tricky. <laughs> Um, but we have to wear masks at, at, at all times. Um, I'm tested twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, generally. I don't know. I guess it's the, the brain easy. scrub, like the up the nose. Oh yeah. That's nothing for me now. I like, I don't even, I watch hard. You watch that show hard knocks, all those big football players. Like Ugh! that's, I'm like, poof, done. No problem. <laughs> Shove it up there. Scratch my brain and I'm done. I'm sure my septum just ruined by now, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I get that nose. <laughs> I get the, if my nose starts looking like this after a while. It's not my nose job. It's, it's, it's from the COVID test. <laughs> but yeah, we're tested um, very regularly. Uh, everything is always like scrubbed down. Everything is a one way street. You can't walk. You know, if I'm going down a hallway and I forget something, I go to turn back to go to my dressing room. I can't do that. I got to do the whole loop around. So they don't want people crossing in the halls. Um, there's no, uh, there's very limited hair and makeup. Uh, so a lot of time I have to do my own, believe it or not, I married a little makeup. Uh, you know, I get a little shiny on set, Sean. So I have to, you know, powder a little, I got to do all that by myself and, uh, the hair, I mean, whatever. I mean, for the guys, it's not such a big deal, but you th talk about, you know, the, some of the, the girls, there's a lot more hair to do. And so that's been a little bit tricky, but it's been pretty incredible on how they've been able to recreate those shots and those those moments. And, you know, if you watch the show, I don't think you can tell a whole, a whole lot of uh, a difference of like pre COVID and post COVID. It's pretty amazing. It's, it's a nod to the directors and, and the producers figuring out how to get around all that. Well, I'm going to be very, very honest. I don't watch bold and the beautiful anymore, uh, okay. but I have watched your scenes and uh, I I'll say this. Um, I was like, as I'm watching, I'm like, Oh, she's going in for the kiss. How are they, how are they going to do this? Like, I'm right, like, I'll tell you about the kiss. So here's, here's the deal. Um, there's like, how are you supposed to, it's COVID. We can't kiss. So they say, Hey, so would Kayla be interested in coming in and, and doubling as, as, as Jack, uh, Jack McKinnon Switch, who plays opposite me. Right. Says that she's my love interest. Amazing, amazing girl, amazing actress. And she's, um, I'm like, okay, let me run it by the wife. Um, who's worked on the show before <laughs> as Caitlin Ramirez in like, I don't even know what it is. 2005 like 15 years ago, 2005. There you go. Not bad. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's going to be kind of interesting for, for her. And so like, Hey honey, do you want to come out and be my, now this is new to the show. It's called an intimacy double. And she's like, what? I'm like, basically we're going to, you're going to come to set. They're going to dress you and make you look like Jackie. We just make out. And she's like, um, all right. Uh, I guess. Okay. So they, so she gets tested and you go in and, um, I'm, I'm a little bit different, uh, uh, height than, um, Jackie's partner. So we're eight feet away. They start the scene and a mannequin comes in as a placeholder. She delivers all her lines to the mannequin moves into the mannequin and Kayla watches all of her you know, everything she does to put her, if she puts her hand on the back of the mannequin's head, if she, uh, you know, the pace that she walks and uh, she makes out with a, with, with a mannequin for a little bit and uh, they cut away and then they do the flip side of, of my perspective. And that's when Kayla, Kayla comes in as, as this double. And uh, me and my wife had some sweet, make out session that I honestly haven't had since I could say maybe my honeymoon. I mean, we're all fired up over here. I mean, whew, watch the kiss something and they shoot tight and they pull away and, and you know, they, I think they did a pretty amazing job. They use CGI effects to, um, to dub me, like, you know, take me away and put me in. So it looks like we're meeting in the center. Um, and yeah, man, movie, movie magic. So that's, that's kind of it. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's just really, it's really weird, especially from my, my perspective, because there was a certain scene where I'm standing there. My real wife is looking at me 
and giving me a pretty good like a read and then jackie is off camera who they are dressed exactly like saying the dialogue and i'm like this is like a twilight zone thing i was like i looked at jackie i was like hey, uh, jackie you gotta you gotta go stand over there because this is too much because i'm looking at my wife you're my movie wife and then you're over there and you're saying the words but kayla's giving me the eyes i don't know what's going on this is too much information so we're like that's just kind of weird and figuring it and we're figuring it out so a lot of the stuff is uh yeah is delivered is delivered it's kind of like working with what it would be like animation or something like that when you hear these guys you know crying to a tennis ball and stuff like that that's basically what we're doing in well, one take they never said it was going to be easy right no but that's the other thing about working in, in so they everyone talks about how fast they move and the pace and the dialogue and everything what it is and that's for me it's just like the pace has been pretty pretty crazy in in the sense where we'll do you know we'll do a scene and and you know on some of their shows they take you know who aren't showing two two episodes a day will you know it's usually one episode for 10 days you know and uh yeah we fought we fire through it man it's, it, we, we keep moving and there's a lot of a lot of one takes and we, we move on and it's on it's, it's on do the you, air in 163 countries so there you go do you do, you do rehearsal like is there like kind of like a walkthrough no so there's no rehearsal uh because of covid gui guidelines they don't want they want to limit us together um we'll do maybe a read through of the scene uh, opposite each other they have like a conference room set up with like full glass cubes that we go into and we'll kind of just run lines real quick but that's that's not like a blocking rehearsal normally you would go into the space and they'll do a quick one for camera because they shoot it with three cameras all in one one cycle and uh, so the really the rehearsal will run it quickly and then it's more for camera movement and uh, they're like great go cool, moving on I'm like all right <laughs> I guess it was good. I, I, I assume at the start, like that had to have been like intense, man. A little bit stressful, no? Like to yeah, just like. Yeah, yeah. Really... And luckily, like Kayla had worked and she, she'd kind of, you know, told me about the pace. Um, but no, it's nothing, you know, until you do it, it it's, it's, it's pretty different. Um, but these guys have been doing it, like you said, for 19, since 1933 years. And, and, uh, yeah, they got a they got a system that works and it's it's tried and true at this point. So I'm just I'm just jumping on in and, and, and trying to fit in best I can. How cool has it been? Uh, you know, and follow your Instagram. It feels like every day you're on a new kind of like, I don't know, talk show, e-news, whatever it is. Uh, has that been a fun experience for you? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, a lot of everyone is pretty interested in, you know, see you know talk, having this conversation about what shooting's like because it's you know being the first production back no one no one really really knew what to expect or, or how, how we were doing things and and now i think everyone's you know because of you know the the guidelines and, and figuring out working with unions like working with sag and and the approved working with the government working with like california and uh, figuring out how to how to do this everyone's really curious about it so um yeah there's been a lot of a lot of buzz around the show uh which is, which is really cool yeah, like uh, they've been uh, <laughs> several interviewers have called you Nuvlin or n n n they haven't been able to get your name right. And I was chuckling. I'm like, huh, well, maybe I should lead off that way. Come yeah, in. I get, no I get Novlin a lot because of the Novlin. Novlin, Novlin, whatever. As a publicist, I didn't talk to publicists about that. Have you been uh, Have you been strutting around the house in your, uh, your white doctor's coat uh, acting like you know what's up? Oh, they don't let me bring it home. They like sanitize it every night. I should though. Well, my wife's a huge great. Well, I don't know. Is Grey's Anatomy still going? I can't remember. It's in like it's 18th season or whatever the hell it is. But she watches that. And my sister-in-law is a nurse and just loves to give it to her that she watched enough Grey's Anatomy. She knows what's going on. Right. <laughs> well, that's true. So yeah, they're, they're a little more in a hospital than Dr. Finn. Dr. Finn does house calls. Dr. Uh, Dr. Finn's a little more interested in the, in the girl than maybe his practice at this point. So <laughs> we're a little skewed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call, call it a medical drama at this point. We're, we're sticking with the, with the heat. We, we know where the sweet spot is. <laughs> I just, just the, 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 Watching the scenes brings me back to, like I say, you talk about this like going on for 33 years, you guys, or like the show has been on for that long and hell, daytime soaps have been on for a very long time. There's a reason why they're popular, right? But uh, the music in them, 
top notch, man. The, and then cut to the faces. Oh, shit. Your mom's well, got it. Like, is your mom like text you after every episode? What's What's interesting about that though is is you know generally you do um you know they shoot that in one take and so a lot of times as, as an actor you got to figure out what to what shot they're doing you know because your your performance varies um, when you're in a wide generally if you're on a, a, a set like say outdoors or, or or like a drama just you know your typical kind of streaming whatever you do a wide shot and an actor will perform a little bigger because there's more space to fill right. And then they do a two shot, which is like the over the shoulder. And then they usually do your close up. And then they turn the whole production around and light it for the other person. And they do it again. So there's six takes right there. Um, in the soap world, because we're, we're shooting so quickly, we got to have an episode every day. We're a lot of times shooting two episodes a day. We'll do all those takes in, in one shot, in, 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 one, in one scene, you know, in one take. So you'll have a camera come around while you're in the middle of a monologue and a red light turns on and you're like, oh, they're in my close up now. And so you'll give a smaller performance because there's a less, you know, there's less movement required because they're so tight on you. You can't be moving around. You'll go out of the frame. So it took a little while to, you know, and is, is still figuring out what shots they're in and when they're in. And, and luckily my uh, coaster Jackie has been helping me a little bit guide through like, Hey, you know, and, 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 and just like seeing some of the episodes air and being like, oh, probably could have turned it down there in that point. They're pretty close on it. Oh, they could have turned it up. It's, it's, uh, they're in the wide, you know? So I don't know, you, you kind of learn a lot on the fly with it, which is, you know, which is pretty cool. Well, and man, give yourself time too, right? Like as you, it's like anything, that's a steep learning curve. Well, luckily the, the character has been really well received so far. So, uh, so there's a hashtag sin going on. So uh, sin is in, it's getting hot and hot and bothered. So I'm breaking up a lot of, <laughs> yeah, she's due. Steffi's due for a new man, Sean, and uh, I'm him. Uh, is it crazy to watch the hashtags and like the popularity <laughs> of a character and like pay attention to that? Like, I know that's your world. It just seems so foreign talking about it over here. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't really pay. I really don't pay a lot of attention to. But sometimes, um, with like social media and stuff, you can't you can't help. And I and yeah. I like engaging with with the fans and people on on Instagram and and people like you know get along it is it is fun to, to hear the good stuff you just have to be careful you hear the bad stuff you're like oh god you don't want it to change your life your performance or like what you're doing too much that's that's all right i just interviewed uh tim McAuliffe from tim and sid and mm. i had a i had a guy reach out and say it was shit so you know yeah you take the <laughs> <laughs> you're just kind of like ah well yeah. that's that sucks well, I'm, glad, you, I'm glad they had to voice that opinion yeah well that's i mean it is what it is i mean yeah. Well, you can't make everybody happy, right? It's tough to do. Um, do you got a pregame routine? I was wondering this. I like to come on uh, uh, yeah. to do a, a, a interview, sitting across from you. I, I got music I like to listen to. I like to get in the right mood. On the way to set, uh, on your way before you get the you know the nose dropped, your your <laughs> uh, nasal cavity. Uh, like, are you? Uh, do you got Did a little routine? Like Usually at uh, like six o'clock in the morning too. So like, it, it's a good wake up. Don't need my coffee around. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. Like for, cause I'm, I used to, I played hockey. Right. So I, um, that probably like, I think of myself a little bit as an athlete in that way. And, and yeah, a little bit of like that pregame or that, that does run in. I mean, I do all my, I never did this before. Um, but I think because I got a little one in the house now, I memorize all my lines in my car which is kind of strange in the driveway. You sit there and talk to yourself in the driveway. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And probably the neighbors are probably thinking, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> Kayla kicked Tanner out again. He's re reading over his, like, whatever. It's like, he's, it's like in there talking to himself, trying to sort out his marriage. Probably everyone thinks when marriage <laughs> fall apart or something like that. It's like, why is he in his car with one light on and like the air going? but it's like a weird um it's kind of like a sound booth in a way and then i feel like uh if it's at night because we you know we shoot in the day in the evening the baby's asleep or whatever i can kind of like use my voice that i'm normally going to do it i don't have to be quiet or like sense or anything and also like there's a non there's not a lot of distractions in there it's, if i don't get on my phone it's just me and this and so i'll, I'll do um you know the workload is, is pretty intense with the amount of dialogue um 
I mean, there was a week we, we shot eight, I shot eight shows in four days. I, it was, I think it was like a guy we counted. It was, it was like, I think it was like 123 pages or 100, yeah, 124 pages. Um, that's a fucking movie. I don't know if you know that but that's a, that's a movie that they'll shoot. Like that's a long movie. Most movies are like a hundred pages on It's usually one minute per page. So you think about 90 minute movie. That's, you know, uh, quick math. Eh? Um, <laughs> so you gotta like, you gotta buckle on and you gotta know your shit because they move fast and you gotta know your dialogue. So, and, uh, and hopefully you can give a good performance while you're doing it. So I, I do that. And then, uh, as, as far as like, you know, going to set, I don't know. I just, yeah, I'll listen to like music or sometimes I'll listen to a podcast or listen to um, Howard Stern, big Howard Stern guy. So he's on it. Oh, morning. yeah. Yeah. I'll listen to him on the way to work. And then I get him at work and it's a little different because back in the day we used to have craft services and and chef on staff where we get. So we, there's no food. I have to bring my own food now, which is a you know, whatever. I remember regional food, not a big deal, uh, but it was a nice little perk, you know, <laughs> when it was fun <laughs> to have craft services. Because if you ever see craft services, it's fucking awesome. I mean, they have everything. It's a, it's a spread. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I'll have my breakfast in the morning and um, we'll do a little hair and makeup. And then, yeah, we, we, go, we go right to set. Fucking we, uh, do your own hair, do your own makeup, bring I your own lunch. There, and so like, yeah, it's like pretty good. And then I get, I get, a, I do get a, like usually a once over. Uh, there'll be the girl that'll be like, oh yeah, you did good today. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Or she'll be like, where's the piece in your, I'm like, oh, okay. I don't, you know, cause you don't know. I'm not thinking about that. Um, You're busier, you know, when you talk about it, I didn't realize you were so busy, like uh, the workload. I mean, like that's, uh, that seems, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of prep um, that goes into it. And then um, we not, we shoot very fast though. So there'll be a day, like we'll shoot 30 pages in three hours or something like that. Not even like, I'll be home at one o'clock and start at nine camera at nine. I'll get there at eight, you know, seven 30. Um, that's a fa- And then they'll shoot the other rest of the storylines for the rest of the day. So it's, it's kind of like a nine to five uh, acting gig. It's just very rare. And um, it's really, it's really nice to do with the, especially with having a family. I get to come yep. home and I get to yep. shoot in LA. Um, you see my kid, um, be with my wife and, you know, see some friends and, and yeah, it's, it's a heavy it? workload when we're shooting and then we do get some time off. It's, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good. So it's kind of cool. How is, uh, how is uh, fatherhood? How is the family? Good, Cause man. your daughter, uh, she'd be what a little over one now. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. When we were talking, she was little and we were like in it, but, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's talking dad, dad, mama moving around. Um, yeah, this quarantine was kind of cool. I mean, a lot of time spending uh, being, being a dad, learn how to be a dad. Um, kind of weird with, for her, cause she's a lot of parent type. We took this COVID pretty seriously as I hope everyone, everyone did. Um, and, and, and well, us, you guys are moving through it. We're still in the middle of this fucking thing, but we're still taking the seriously also because I don't want to, you know, get anyone else sick. I don't want, I don't want to get sick. No, your job depends uh, on it. Right. Um, yeah. I'm working and I don't want to get, I don't want to shut production down. So we're, we're pretty lock and key over here for the most part, uh, buckled up. So we have taken her to the park a few times. So she like knows other children are out there. Uh, but I hope this like COVID thing doesn't have too much of a social uh, effect uh, on her. Cause it's been a lot of mom and dad and uh, immediate family, you know, um, but it's funny at the park she goes up to the parents rather than the kids, which is like, oh no, okay. But she'll she'll get over it. I mean, she's she's one in a little, so hopefully she, she's only one. <laughs> she goes over there. She wants to hang out with the parents. I'm like, honey, go. There's a bunch of kids over there. Go 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 play. You know, says, uh, <laughs> we got well, we got a one year old now too, right? He just turned. Uh, Casey just turned one, and geez, oh yeah, just like behind a pop. week. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's a bowling ball man. Like he's gonna. I hope all my kids are taller than me and I'm just like the small dad and I just get to look up at them because they're <laughs> all like, they're all freakishly tall, man. Like, does your wife uh, have that in her? Uh... Yeah, she does. Yeah. She's five. Well, she's only five ten, but I mean, compared to me, that's pretty tall. She's five ten. That's, that's tall. I think that's, that's all. Awesome. I think so. Yeah. 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 She was a star volleyball player. So she, uh, yeah, she's, yeah, good, she's, she's probably, player. she's probably a better athlete than I am. I'm, I'm, mar- I'm married up. I made sure my kids were going to get the best. Good. Yeah. Well, as every good hockey dad will, he'll find a way, <laughs> find a way. January 2nd birthday, you know, you time that right. Marry a 5'10 woman should have a hockey player. <laughs> Figure it out. I saw that. Uh, well, I saw, I, I creep the shit out of you on IMDB. It says you got a, what's puckheads? 
Oh yeah, man. That's a pilot we shot in, uh, in Chicago. Is, uh, is that happening then or no? Yeah, we're going to see, I think they're trying to find a home with it. Um, right now, but that was shot before bold. I think maybe two years, maybe a year ago, maybe. Um, oh really? It said 20, yeah, yeah, I could have swore it said 2020 on, uh, on the, I don't know. No, we shot in 19, I think we shot in 19. Anyway, whatever. Um, no, they're trying to find a home with it. It's really, it's really funny. It's like a, um, it's almost like uh remember major league. Yeah. It's like major league meets entourage. So it's a, it's a minor league hockey team. Uh, Oh, what's the goalie? Clint, Clint Marchuk. Yeah. Clint Marchuk. He, 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 he was involved with it. So there's a bunch really? of guys in that area. Yeah. Um, he was cool. He came to set and, and we shot the shit with him and we, we shot it at the Chicago wolves uh, stadium and then used all their facilities. Um, so I did all like all the hockey stunts in it and I play a, play like a young hockey guy who gets into some trouble with, um, with uh, sleeping around with maybe the wrong, the wrong gal at the wrong time. Uh, so it's kind of, it's, 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 it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully find homes. We'll, we'll, well, well, yeah. Well, you know me, I like hockey guy. Right. So like, yeah, I know I just tell those guys you shouldn't can it or something like that. Well, find a way to get it on. If it's, uh, if it's well done. Right. Like, I mean, they've been, yeah, it'd yeah. be it'd be cool to have something like that oh, i mean hell up here we'd we'd gladly take a show like that i think i don't know fuck maybe yeah. i'm wrong it, it was fun and it, and basically it was it was all these like clint where they have all these crazy old stories and so they incorporated all of them into the and it's kind of all based off like stuff that happened in the 70s and early 80s like they, they would show up to the rink and the, the equipment wouldn't be there and, the man, and they're like where's the equipment and they're like i don't know and they call in the guy and they can't find the guy and he like went on a binger he's sober 10 years or whatever and he relapsed and he's like in a parking lot and they he's locked himself in the van or something like that and he's passed out and they like that happened with the tampa bay lightning like you hear all these like stories that you would hear on like you know you know bar room talk from these guys and they're like let's let's see if we can make a series out of this so yeah it's pretty cool we'll see if it finds oh hell we all know if you can uh, get the stories of hockey players out there's some stories there and it it make okay. great television as long as it isn't PG. No, no, this was not this was not PG at all. Perfect. Well, then it sounds like a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll have to find out. Um, going back to uh, Bold, uh, you, you know, like that show, what is it? 35 million viewers a day? Does that sound about right? Over 100-some countries? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Jesus, you're making me nervous now. I don't know. Something 30, like that. Yeah. 35 million viewers daily in over 100 countries. That's a, that's a lot. Uh, what I was curious about was even last time we talked, we talked about, uh, uh, your Instagram and we were talking about Instagram, like influencers and that kind of thing. But you mentioned, uh, movies and shows. And if you have a big following that it makes you, you know, more appetizing to people because you can pull your followers over to what your projects are. Sure. Have you seen a big jump in people following you? Since you I mean, a little, on a little bit like, um, yeah, like, uh, they seem to be very active on Twitter, um, which is really cool. I, I've never really uh, been on Twitter a ton. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's cool to see, uh, the diversity of, of the fans, um, you know, especially from different countries. Uh, the show is big in, in Italy. Uh, I know the show's been shot a lot in Italy and in Spain, um, Australia. Uh, the show is really well received there. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, and so there's been a, a yeah, definitely like I, I knew like a diversity with, uh, people I can connect with that way. It's kind of cool. Have you been doing shows then over there too? Uh, not like, uh, your, not the actual show, but like talk shows then have you been like interviewed? Yeah. 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 Uh, some, some like, yeah, a bunch in, uh, Australia. Really? Which is crazy because it's a lot technology is crazy, but it's a live feed. Yeah. 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 How crazy is that? Well, I mean, on the podcast alone, I've talked to people in Italy and Indonesia like right in the middle of uh, fuck, Earl Stevenson. You remember Earl? Yeah, uh, yeah. I went to high school with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. he was in Indonesia. Uh, while uh, singer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I Zoom called him and did an interview with All him right. after after yours. And he was sitting in Indonesia, trapped there by COVID, just hanging out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think he's home now, I think is what I've heard. But um, he was having a grand old time. Like, I mean... I I guess if you, got, if you got it set up and you're and you're comfortable. I mean, you, and if you're on, was he on vacation or when? I guess next, he he went he went there. I'm, for happy, vacation. I'm happy I wasn't stuck anywhere because I I've heard a few horror stories from that man. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Being stuck in different uh, different countries. Well, through COVID, yeah. I'm happy I was just home. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know, man. We're in different worlds. I, I when I hear you talk about COVID, like you're in a city that has millions upon millions of people. And I mean, you know, Lloyd, you know, Paradise Hill. There just mm-hmm. isn't enough population to. Just well, yes, and 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 I mean, we don't need to. But and you had leadership that, that took you there, uh, and you listened. I mean, I, I know that my the, the grocery store closed in town, and and or not the grocery store, but the the main stores, and everyone respected that early. We yeah, there was that. like for a month there was nothing. It was yeah, theory, and, and and we didn't do that hard. You know, in California, we kind of did. We're still trying to figure it out, and you know, it's been handled differently. And that's that, that was the problem. We we never had a lot of a lot of uh, leadership in, in that regard. And I think we're suffering the consequences of being behind every other country in the world when, when dealing with this. You, you see Trump got COVID? It sucks. it sucks because I, I like, I shouldn't still be having to shoot these scenes and talk about this with COVID and I'm, I'm an actor. Like you imagine having your small business not being able to be open because of all this, because it wasn't ha- handled correctly in my, you know, in my opinion off the bat, you know, and it just it's 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 went on I think longer than it should have. You see, Trump got COVID. Obviously, <laughs> I th- I assume you've seen that. Yeah, I, I saw that. You think that's yeah, you think he actually that. you think he's yeah. actually got it? Yeah, he I saw that he looks pretty sick to me. And then I think he's all jacked up on meds. He went on a tweet <laughs> storm the other day. <laughs> when when doesn't he go on a tweet storm? This one was special though. It just said like like pro life vote. You know, veteran. You look it up. It's it's all he's he. There's like twenty of them in a row. I, I I think he's medicated. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's really actually scary. And it's it's there's a national security issue now. Um, you know, it's like what decisions are being made. What's going to change the campaign? It's a whole. It's a it's a fucking dumpster fire right now. So I don't know, man. We'll 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 see what's <laughs> we'll see what goes on. I don't know. Did you see the SNL skit the other night? Yeah, I thought Jim Carrey did a phenomenal job with Biden. It was amazing. I mean, his Trump is amazing, like always, and it's hard. I was thinking about that, like to play that would be pretty intimidating in the sense of, you know, he's going to crush Trump. Uh, you know, he, he does every time. Baldwin, Baldwin. Baldwin's phenomenal. Baldwin's phenomenal. And so to be opposite that, it'd be like, oh, God, I got it. And I thought Jim Carrey, and it's, of course he does, because Jim Carrey is a legend. He's amazing at impersonations. And he, he was, I thought it was, I thought it was hilarious. So it was perfect. He, uh, Jim Carrey on the list of actors, like he's phenomenal. Like he, just his mannerisms, uh, everything, his facial expressions is unbelievable. I think he's a kind of a one of a kind. I think he's, um, I think he can only play certain parts. I think he can, uh, bring a different perspective to something that, that no one will see. And that's, that's, that's a true artist in my, in, in, in my craft. That's for sure. Uh, on a side note, on a completely side note, I, uh, Netflix. Have you seen the Social Dilemma? Um, <clears throat> I haven't. No, you haven't seen I the Social thought, Dilemma. I, thought, I, thought, I think I started it. Um, it's about the use of, of Instagram and your phone and stuff, right? Oh yeah, like social media in general. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't watched it. It's on my list. I've been stuck in the Vow. Oh. The Vow. Yeah, that's on HBO. <clears throat> what uh, is the Vow? Uh. The vow is about this, um, and it's, it was in Van. They had a headquarters in Vancouver, and they had one in Albany, New York. This happened in 2000, I think, 18, so just a couple of years ago. Um, but it was a self-help program called Nexium, and it was founded by this guy Keith Rainier, and he recruited um, a lot of actually actors uh, from Vancouver. Allison Mack being one of them, um, Kristen Kirk was there. One of the, a lot of people on the supernatural things that they were shooting in Vancouver at that time. Uh, documentary filmmakers and wealthy um like kind of kids from from los angeles and all over the world who kind of a little bit lost and you offer them self-help programs fast forward a few years it's a complete sex cult and everyone has been like deeply manipulated he's life in prison sorry to ruin it but i mean it's in the nation and he's branding women with his initials oh i know okay fascinating shit i'm sure you've heard about heard about it no 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 as soon as you say the branding i i remember the news stories about that yeah i just didn't realize so that's on uh hbo that's on hbo check that one i've been stuck in that one but i'll definitely check out the social dilemma yeah well the social dilemma just 
<clears throat> it is what you think it's gonna be, right? Like it's it's not. It's yeah, not I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm from the generation. And it's a little bit different. Um, you know, you and I are the same age, so we. I grew up. I got, I got a cell phone when I got a car. Um, and so it's not. I do use my phone a lot, and uh, I can work a lot on my phone. Um, but I, I don't play games on my phone, and I don't. I don't get sucked down too too much into social media because I think I grew up kind of seeing both sides of it. Now raising a daughter, it's going to be interesting on how uh, to navigate that um, because I know it's a whole other whole other bag now. You know, it can be it can be really good, and it can also be there's a lot of a lot of. Well, they just talk about. Uh, well, I won't, I won't spoil. And they're them. monitoring everything, right, at all times. I don't look yeah. at a lot of crazy shit, so I mean, whatever. Yeah, but they, I, I always go back to. I don't know if I got a whole lot of crazy <clears> that they're really interested in. If they want, they can just tune on the podcast and hear my thoughts, right? But wasn't it hilarious how you buy a pair of night shoes or something, and then like and then they start popping? Like up I already everywhere. bought the shoes, you idiot! Like you're still sending me ads for these shoes. I already bought them. <laughs> Fucking light. So you... They're not that good. The the one they're we not, always not in my brain totally. They're just, Really, like, he's looking at, and he's like, "No, no, I already, I already found it." But yeah, the one Sometimes that gets I like it. I bought a T-shirt off Instagram once, and I'm like, "You're right, Instagram. I do think this shirt is hilarious." And way I go to buy it. What was the last shirt you bought off Instagram? <laughs> you don't know what it was? It was a, it was a, um, it was a Justin Trudeau shirt, and it was him with his shirt off, and he had this flowing hair. And there was a moose in the background with Canadian geese. And it was all like oranges and reds and a sun setting. It was like this, almost like a romance novel. And I was like, this is hilarious. Um, yes, Instagram, you're right. Okay. I have worn it twice. I don't know. I don't even know if I still have it. <laughs> yeah, it got me. The, the ones that always get me or we talk about is you mentioned, I don't know, bold and beautiful. And all of a sudden your phone, the next time you open it, there's an ad for bold and the beautiful. And you're like, <laughs> they're trying to recruit you, Sean. <laughs> they're, they're, what, what are you doing on 12? What are you doing at 12 30s at 12 30 at, at lunchtime? Come on. Every day of the week. Can you imagine? It's a half hour show. Most uh, of these are hours. Hey guys, I gotta, I gotta leave. I gotta go home for lunch yeah. every day at this time. Yeah. Why? <laughs> bold and the beautiful man. Yeah, bold and the beautiful. Alive. You got a uh, hook my teeth in you. You don't know what's going to happen with Steffi. She's going on a roller coaster right now. I'm just on this for the ride with her. <laughs> Your mom texting you after every episode? Not as much as I thought, but she's definitely ex- excited about it. Um, she doesn't, I think I've given her a hard enough time. She's like, I don't know, she watches though. She like, she, she, it's fun for the moms, that's for sure. Oh, God. Well, <clears throat> let's roll into the final five. I, uh, I don't want to keep you all night long here. And I know the Dodgers are playing for the record. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. What, are, what are you going to do? Five questions. We've done it before. Uh, try and have some fun with these five. Okay. Here we go. All right. If you could go to a, if you could go to a late show, so we're talking Fallon, uh, well, whoever you want on the late shows, there's how many of them, which one would you take? I assume you're taking Fallon, but maybe I'm just biased. Oh, I go to, I go to like John Oliver. Would you go to John Oliver? No, I think he's hilarious. Well, he he's is hilarious, awesome. but I mean, uh, yeah, I think I'd like to watch him work. I find him really cool. Uh, but you mean like the the like the network? Um, I like Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, they're all great. I, but I'm, yeah, I like Jimmy Kimmel a lot. I think he's funny. Um, I don't watch a lot of Fallon. I like Fallon, but I'm, I'm a, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Fallon guy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have imposed that on you both, because both Jimmy's. There you go. <laughs> If I was sending a care package tomorrow from Canada, what would you want in it? Oh, um, oh, geez, there's so much good. There's so much good, like a bag of chips. But what kind? Uh, what, what, what are we talking uh, uh, here? Uh, dill pickle, probably, because I don't get that very often. I don't eat a lot of dill pickle. But any, honestly, you guys have. There's a bunch of new ones now too. I was up there once. There was like a moose and moose and maple or something. I'm like moose and maple, and it was delicious. <laughs> I don't know. They, they we're on the Canadians are on the cutting edge for the oh, chip potato department. chips. <laughs> yeah, cutting edge. It's an, and chocolate bars, fucking amazing. Here, Why, what, what 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 chocolate bar do we got that you love? Uh, what's the um, eat more? Okay, eat more is pretty. Good. Eat more. Remember, eat more. I get that yeah. hot drink yeah. and eat more and like a burger with the onion rings. Oh, <laughs> my God, and like a beef jerky, that old Dutch beef jerky. 
You know what, man? With I'm all the co- feel of those sticks and like my winter coat up in <laughs> my parents' closet still. <laughs> with everything going on COVID, there might not be a whole lot of that going on at the community ranks. I don't know if all the yeah, that's a shame. There's nothing better than a P a Hill burger. burger. And oh, you're yeah. gonna say Hillmon, but it's better in Paradise Hill. Man, we can fight about that later. <laughs> They are good, man. I haven't, I tell my wife all the time, like, you gotta go get a burger, but I just haven't had that. Yeah. You taking yeah. your wife to get a P Hill burger? Not yet. We haven't been in the, I haven't watched the, I don't think the Hawks have a team anymore, do they? Oh, yeah. Oh, the they Hawks are gonna be all over you now. Oh, good. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta catch up. I don't know. I, they I don't show their the, games down here, Sean. Fuck. What do you want? <laughs> come on. Come on, Tanner. I gotta get on I the can figure it out here. Okay. Yeah. All I know <laughs> is, uh, I check in every once in a while, but I don't know. I used to have some of the buddies that used to play on the teams, and then I guess they everyone kind of it's they got a question at thirty four. <laughs> they got well, fair, fair. They got a pretty kick ass uh, dressing room now. The Hawks. Do they? Oh yeah. You know, my dad is alumni there. I remember going down there as a kid, and like that was a hockey. That was a dressing room in the in the like Probably early smoking 90s. and oh yeah, shit everywhere I, and you know, beer. games on there, and I'm like, this guy's nickname is Fire Hose. I, Oh, he must be a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. No, no, that's that's not correct. <laughs> Try again, Tanner. Try again. I remember the stick room. My dad had cut sticks off. God, man, ladies hung out a lot at the ring. That was really cool. I never Fuck. played as a hawk though. I was as was I guess I was a bandit for a week. I don't know. I was, I was at that same area. I, I couldn't make the junior team. Nobody fucking could from the town. I don't know what happened there. Did you, uh, on a side note of hockey, did you see Trebek tonight? Oh, like yeah, that Alex was really cool. Trebek? He did the Ottawa pick, right? Yeah, man, that was yeah, fucking... that was really cool. I, I like that. You know, he's a, he's a big, you know, he's in the middle of a big fight. So that, that was kind of cool. Yeah, Can well, he, on a, I mean, when does the NHL step out of its, like, yeah. I don't know. For the record, I got to, I mean, I don't want to like do this, but I am so jealous of your guys' Hockey Night in Canada feed I have such a hard time with NBC. I think it's the, they have, they're struggling. All right. And I know Doc Emmerich is like revered down here. And I really, I don't know. I've just been spoiled with the, with Bob Cole and Jim Houston, like all these years. I just don't, the one of the most frustrating things that he does is he doesn't use hockey terms. And I think it's a disservice to the game. And what does he? What does he use? Uh, now you got me curious. What's one that really, really uh, oh, gets you wound? Oh, oh, he'll do. Well, he uh, he doesn't say a shot, a shot on goal, a slap shot. He doesn't. Everybody knows what a slap shot is, and he calls it a drive. He will say oh. it like a golf. He will say a drive, drive by you know Kucherov. That's a save, and I'm like, it's a shot. Like, and it was interesting. Is like you look at it's, it's like, say NASCAR, right? how complicated is fucking NASCAR with the adjustments to the car and the going around and the rules and the, like, and they stick to the terms to sell to, and this is, I'm selling it to just like an American market. That's not from that, you know, realm on a national scale. And like, I understand what it means to take wedge out of the car because they explained it and they stay with that term. They don't use something else. And I find it really strange that he, I don't know, dry. He says them all the time, but like, if you ever listen to NBC feed, listen to corral or something i guess that's a little bit lighter but he just does it all the time i'm just like man that's not a hockey hockey term and have you ever said that uh drive, drive? no yeah. well he drives to the net uh but that's, not no, a shot it. no 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 it's he uses it as, as, a, as a form of a shot yeah so I, I i don't know and and he's nbc's main guy and i'm like we're we're spoiled up here you know we are we we have also, the best and also they missed the drama of the matchups and I think the viewer down here is ready, ready to like understand matchups and, and the game within the game. And, and I, I mean, I, po- I pointed out to friends that like watch the game. I'm like, Hey, look at these two right here at the bottom of the screen. There's going to be a fight. How do you know? How do you like, and if, and, and, and uh, hockey night in Canada feed, you will already know that that's almost going to happen because they've, they've been telling you that they've been at each other. They'll show a quick little highlight package of them whacking each other, maybe a couple shifts before, and then sure, that's drama. That's that's building more interest in the game. And NBC doesn't do that. The intermission report sucks. It just <laughs> the whole thing sucks. Yeah, that's, we got Kevin Bieksa now. He's been a uh, uh, oh, really. I don't even see. I haven't even seen it. He's uh, 
Uh, really good. So, yeah, you, so I hate to rub it in, but right now, so with Ron McLean, you got uh, Cassie Campbell, and she's she's not my favorite, but she's doing okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but they brought in Kevin Bieksa, who retired for obviously, and mm -hmm. he's like phenomenal. They got Brian Burke, who's phenomenal, yeah. right? And Elliot Friedman most nights. Those four oh. kind of, and I mean, it's it's here's, top here's notch. The thing though, I don't necessarily think it's it's the guys. I think it's the programmer. I think, I think that, I, I mean, like, cause it's, we have Patrick Sharp, uh, Eddie Olchek and um, another guy, I don't know, whatever. And I, I think and <laughs> really, really people. memorable. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're I, these guys are knowledgeable guys. They know what's going on, but I think that they're told they have to be because like Patrick Sharp knows what's going on in the game. You know what I mean? Like, I think they're told not to like get into that, into the shit, into the details. And they're just like, just show some slaps, some drives and uh, we'll show throw it at a commercial or something. I don't know. It's you a think, bummer. is it because people wouldn't understand? Is that why they wouldn't want them to do it? I don't know. I have no idea. I think they should take that risk. I tell you what, uh, when I lived in Wisconsin there for the four years, one of the things that pained me was I was so close to Canada and still couldn't get the CBC feed. Like, <laughs> I just Black want, just want, man. just want hockey. I know what you're talking about. We get that Edmonton gets it or used to get it all the time. Um, I don't I'm trying to think of who we got now. Somebody's going to be giving me a hard time about this, but I remember when I was a kid, we used to get like the third or fourth commentator. We didn't get the best ones. And mm -hmm. that used to irritate a guy. So you'd turn the TV dial right down and then you'd turn on six thirty Chad so that you could actually have the, oh, the, yeah. the good guys. Cause they, they were good. The only problem was, was then well, the, the game was delayed. Oh, oh. You just, that's annoying as hell. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the radio guys are always the best. That's what's, I've never figured that out. Well, I mean, I guess they have to describe the game in the best. In, in, in they, ha they have to, there's no ability. You have to, uh, wow. I, there's no way for them to visualize right. You can't just watch the play. You got to tell them what's going on. And mm -hmm. if you're like really good at it, you can make the boringest game feel like it's game seven and they're going at it. And, just the animation in a person. Yeah, well, Michael said cool. that for I'll listen to the Oiler game in the car on the app. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Michael's is if the Oiler, what's his first name? Let's skip it. Please. Jack Michaels. Jack Michaels, fucking phenomenal. Uh, well, let ah. me tell you, he's a guy that does it because there's a lot of Oiler games where they're yeah. just fucking doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell you. All right. What's your next fast five? <laughs> well, that. Oh, I'm a sleeper. <laughs> it's not that like you're getting old man right like no i'm just know. up early now how do you do it at your house uh i got, got three man i you know like i had the little girl crawled in the bed this morning at four in the morning and i was just too tired to be like you know i'd carry you back i'm like you want to come all right just don't move sleep and we're good are you drinking a white claw <laughs> um yeah I don't know. It was, yeah, I kind of like him. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you could remake any of the hockey movies, Miracle, Mighty Ducks, Young Blood, Slapshot, Mystery Alaska, all come to mind. I'm sure I'm missing one or two in there. Which one would you do? Um, none of them. They're all good movies. I'd maybe redo Mighty Ducks. They're gonna they're remaking Mighty Ducks right now. Are they really? Yeah. Who's cast? To try to get in everything Every, like everyone's back i think i don't know i can't play a 12 year old anymore so it's tough it's so are they tough. having emilio estevez back yeah i was trying to be emilio but they're like no emilio's gonna do it i'm like fuck okay <laughs> i get it <laughs> so I, had, I was like, everyone calling about that yeah they're remaking mighty ducks so that'll be that'll be interesting to see how they do that um but no why would you touch slap shot that's a great movie it still holds up mystery relaxism is still a good movie that holds up you don't need to remake everything. I'm not saying no. I'm not. That's what you're saying. But okay, yeah, I, okay. I'll, I'll rephrase I'll the mind. bloody question. Go back to 1970 when they made Slapshot, and you could be cast in it, or go back to them, and you could be cast in these movies. Which one would you want to be cast in in the original? Oh, the slap, the Slapshot. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that's iconic. That's and also you get to work with Paul Newman, who's a legend. Oh my God. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, they remade a few of them, but it, it was a yeah, bit we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to worry about the few it's after. It happens, yeah. 
Yeah. If you were in a celebrity WWE tag team match, who would you want as your partner? The, the fucking Rock. Like, why would I want <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Ron, actually, I'm going to change that. Ronda Rousey. What? Yeah, I want Ronda Rousey. No, I watched, I went to one of those. My buddy is uh, friends with her and we went, which we, we had passed. We went, I hadn't been to a WWE in forever. I think they came to Edmonton once in like Stone Cold Steve Austin and his heyday. And we went for my birthday or something like that once. It was the best birthday ever. And uh, my buddy was, my buddy's friends with, with, with Ronda. And so he's like, hey, Ronda Rousey's like doing this. And I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, let's go check it out. And so we went to the Staples Centers and there's a lot of violence. <laughs> Ronda They're Rousey gonna... got beat over the back with like a stick. Something like that. It was like there's a lot going on, but she was badass. I'd take her on around any day. Well, Ronda <laughs> Rousey over the rock. Did not see that coming. If if you if you got I don't even know any other one of them. What John Cena? Any other, John Cena? No, 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 no. I I I I don't know, man. Like with mankind. The guy with the sock, the guy mankind. With the sock. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> mankind. No, no man. All right. Yeah, no. I'm not new school. The Undertaker is pretty scary. He kind of freaked me out even when I was like, uh, even when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that hair. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> Final one. If you could guest appear on any of the cartoon shows, they draw you in and you're the guest star of the show. Which one would you go? Family Guy. Family Legend- Guy. Yeah, legendary Family Guy. I know Rich Appel too. Maybe he's maybe he'll listen to this and write me a write me a role in there. <laughs> I'm trying I'm, to hang out with those guys. I went to Seth MacFarlane's Christmas party. It was pretty fucking epic. I don't know. It was you, went to Seth, you went to Seth MacFarlane's Christmas party? Yeah, he throws a big Christmas party every year. Like, big. What's big? Oh, like, the nicest wedding you ever been to. Or Actually, I, honestly, it, it's like, the if you were to go to the Oscars, uh, the, the Disney Orchestra is there. The Disney Orchestra is there. Yes. and uh, And he sings along to the Disney Orchestra. He'll do a few songs. Seth MacFarlane will add his party. He's going to sing along to the Disney Orchestra. Yeah. yeah. And, Why the uh, hell don't we lead off with that story? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he throws it at his house. And uh, obviously his house is, it can handle, <laughs> handle this scale, but it's like, it's kind of like an awards party in the sense of like those huge tents. It's beautiful. It's, it's insane, but it's a good, yeah, it's a good time. Oh shit. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back home to three scheming kids and you enjoy LA. Jesus. Hey man, I'm in the middle of COVID. Those parties, I miss those parties. Yeah. I tell me about it. I'm in here with you, man. <laughs> well, thanks for hopping on again and talking a little bit, you know, where you're at in your career that, you know, yeah, this man. point you're on the rise. It's cool to watch and I uh, wish you nothing but success and a lot of sin, I guess, to come. There's a lot of sin to come, um, which is cool. And then it looks like uh, Roswell, uh, New Mexico on the CW has, has an, another season coming up. So yeah, maybe you have to stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to try and do some, some of that. Action. So we'll, we'll see, man. Yeah, there's lots going on. It's cool. Cool. Chat again, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for hopping on again, Tanner. Of course, man. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, folks. Thanks again for joining us today. If you just stumble on the show and like what you hear, please click subscribe. Remember, every Monday and Wednesday, a new guest will be sitting down to share their story. The Sean Newman Podcast is available for free on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you find your podcast fix. Until next time.